So you see yourself as an advanced Google Tag Manager implementer? Then here are five tips that you probably didn't know yet to make your work easier in Google Tag Manager. All and more, coming up. Hey there and welcome back to another video of MeasureSchool.com teaching you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian and on this channel we do marketing tech reviews, tutorials and tips and tricks videos just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Now today I wanted to give you five advanced Google Tag Manager tips to make your work easier in the tool. I've been working with the tool for over five years now, have done hundreds of implementations and there's always something that you can improve in your implementation skill. Google Tag Manager is really an art, the implementation of implementing tracking codes onto your website, I see it as an art and there are different ways of doing things and there are different tips and tricks that you can use in order to do it faster and more efficiently. And today I want to present you my five tips that I often use. Let's dive in. All right, let's dive into our first tip, inspect the internal data model of Google Tag Manager. Now you might be familiar with the data layer if you're a little bit more advanced and that you can push data to the data layer. The data layer that you see here is actually different from the data layer that you might see in your JavaScript console. So if you go to our JavaScript console, we can obviously type in data layer and we would get the representation of all the different objects in here that we also see in the data layer up here. But this is actually not an array in a traditional sense because it has been filled with a function down here that is the push method. And what this actually does, it transfers all the information that we see in this object into the internal data model of Google Tag Manager. How can we access this? Well, if you know this red syntax, you can inspect this actually. And it goes like follows. You just type in Google underscore Tag Manager, like this. And then in square brackets, you enter your GTM container ID. In our case, that is this one up here. See if I can copy that out right here. And then you have access to different methods within the data model of Google Tag Manager. Now what we are interested in is the actual data layer. So let's put a dot and a data layer in here. And then we have different methods available. We can set data layer values for certain keys. We can get certain data from the data layer and from the internal data model of Google Tag Manager, and we can reset the data layer. Now, the tip that I want to show you is actually how to get a data layer key. All you need to do is use the get method with a string that would represent whatever you want to retrieve from the data layer. And you can actually use the right syntax that we also use within the variable menu here if you would build a data layer variable. We can access, for example, the e-commerce dot detail dot products and then the first product, which would be zero and the name. And that would give us back the actual data layer key right here. Great way to try out your data layer keys in advance. We can also just copy this and transfer it into our data layer name right here. Save this and now it's saved in a data layer variable. There's another advantage to this method because if you wanted to use this product name inside of an HTML tag, you could obviously insert it by these two curly brackets, finding your data layer variable and using that in your custom HTML tag. But sometimes you don't really want to or find it too burdensome to build data layer variables for every single key that you see in your data layer. And again, we can use the same method that we have already tried out here in the JavaScript console to use in our context of an HTML tag. Again, just execute our JavaScript and put it into a variable called test. Now, this is a global variable. You shouldn't be doing this in a real life scenario, in a real tag deployment, because it could have side effects. And then also don't uh, log it out. We'll just do this for demonstration sake right now. Let's refresh this. Let's refresh our page. And we should see our name printed into the console right here. So really just a quick tip on how to 
inspect the internal data model of Google Tag Manager and pull out some information from the internal data layer representation. All right, moving on. Our next step is to actually try out your matches CSS selector beforehand. Now you might be aware that the option of using matches CSS selector is available inside of your filter menus of your triggers. So we have this very powerful matches CSS selector option. We have another video what this is all about. It is just very cumbersome to figure out if you have, for example, up here a menu point and you want to track all the menu points up here to inspect this and maybe figure out what is this an ascendant of, how can I build my CSS selector to properly match up with the element that I'm comparing this against. Now, obviously you could use the JavaScript console and type something like document dot query selector, but this is also just a guessing method really, because you would need to run this on a certain element and that would be the element that would appear in the GTM elements pane. So if I click on here, I have a link click trigger already installed. I have variables and I see here under my click elements, I have an object and you need to have an HTML object to actually use the matches CSS selector on. Now, yes, we see here that this is a URL, but it would really be an HTML element that this needs to run on. And only then we can use the matches CSS selector option. Now, if you're all aware of that, you could start the game of trying to build a CSS selector here. Try it out by going into your elements pane and trying out a CSS selector, connecting this all to a tag, going back and forth with the refresh and preview mode to figure out if your tag fires correctly or not. So what is a better method? Well, looking back at our last tip, we can actually use the internal representation of the data layer. If we look into our preview and debug mode here, we have our data layer and we want to look at the GTM element, which is the representation of the click element right here. So let's access this via our JavaScript console. I'll open up our JavaScript console here and just go back to the last one. This time we want to get the gtm.element. And voila, we have the right element available here. By the way, if you want to look at the representation in the elements pane, you can right click and reveal an elements pane and see the CSS selectors here. And then another tip, if you press the escape key, this will actually open up the JavaScript console underneath the elements pane. So you can see both at the same time. Now our goal is to always fire this once somebody clicks on one of these menu points. So we have here the div class primary navigation and we want to try out our CSS selector rule. How would we do this? Well, we could use this element right here. Let's click on the up button and press dot. And then we will put in a method that Google Tag Manager actually uses for this matches CSS selector option, which is the matches option. So if you have that method available, you can now try out if your CSS selector would work in the trigger scenario. So in our case, first of all, we would have a link. So I'll put an A in and it says true. That's a positive for our matches CSS selector. Obviously that's too broad. Now say we wanted to take our descendant here of our primary navigation. Okay. Now I'll press enter and I see false because this is actually not a valid CSS selector. First of all, I would need to have a dot here in the front. Now it's true, but if I wanted to get direct descendants, I could also input the smaller sign. This is false because it's not a direct descendant. It's actually of that UL element and so on. So let's go back and get rid of this. Maybe add another selector just to make sure. Let's say we wanted to have a menu item in there. So maybe dot menu item and that matches it up fine. Now the cool thing is we can actually try this out. Again, I'm gonna press this with the command key. So 
This gets pushed into the data layer. And this time I press the up arrow again here in my JavaScript console. This will access the actual representation inside of Google Tag Manager and try the matches option right here. We get a true as well. Let's try something uh, negative out. So I'm gonna press on this hello world and use my same rule. I'm just pressing the up arrow here again and I get a false. So I'd be pretty confident by now that my matches CSS selector option actually works. So I can copy this, go back to my Google Tag Manager account and enter this as a matches CSS selector option. So this would be just my links in the menu. We have that connected to a test tag. There's nothing in there, but it will help us to validate our rule. So let's refresh our page, close all these panes, and I'm gonna click on one of these buttons. It didn't fire, why is that? Let's go to test tag and click down. There was a wrong variable, whoops. So let's go back to our trigger menu. It should actually be the click element, right? So let's save this, refresh. Refresh again, and this time we see our test tag fires only on link clicks on these menu items. So really a cool way to use the internal data model with the JavaScript console to test out your matches CSS selector option before you actually input it into the tool.